but before I, I go into the business of the day, um, uh, the management and staff of the Zambia Agency, Zamstats, wish to congratulate His Excellency, Mr. Akainde Hichilema, on his election as the seventh president of the Republic of Zambia. We further extend our heartfelt congratulations to the Vice President, Her Honor, Mrs. Mutale Nalubango. We wish them God's protection, guidance, and wisdom as they pursue the vision for a prosperous Zambia during the tenure of office. And, uh, thank you very much. Um, allow me now to come to the business of the day, um, which is basically the, 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 the highlights for the month of August. We'll touch on um, price developments and developments with respect to international merchandise trade. As per custom, the first one will deal with uh, inflation. But before I, I go into, into the numbers, let me make a few, a few statements that we need to uh, have as side notes. Basically, uh, pressure on food inflation uh, continues. It's uh, sustained. It's, 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 uh, food inflation continues to be stubborn. And the other um, uh, issue I'd like you to note is that uh, the, the developments, recent developments in the foreign exchange market uh, to a large extent subdued the non-food inflation uh, during the month. Um, we've also seen a direct effect on prices of uh, some items like motor vehicles. But overall, monthly price developments have continued on a downward trend. And um, the next slide basically just shows the, the, the reductions in some of the key prices, I think the bottom, uh, almost the bottom half, I think is of interest to us. Um, what well, you are seeing, the substantial reduction in prices of metal, motor vehicles, new motor vehicles, including second-hand uh, uh, vehicles during the month of, uh, of, um, of August. Now, uh, having given you those highlights, let's now look at what were the developments, what happened with respect to the two components of uh, inflation. Basically, you've got the, the food and non-food, and I think you are all aware that uh, food carries uh, quite some influence of 53% uh, plus in the overall uh, inflation development. In the month of uh, August, um, the monthly food inflation rose by rose to 0.9% from 0.2%. And again, this was driven by meat, uh, increases in prices of meat, chickens, vegetables, and, and sugar. I think for the past uh, so many months, we've been talking about mainly meat prices, chicken prices, uh, fish prices, but I think fish has dropped out. There seems to be some stability in the prices of, uh, of fish, uh, though still high. Um, then the non-food uh, inflation declined to minus 0.4% from 0.4% in July. Ordinarily, in, 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 um, in terms of describing what happened here, you basically say that this was a deflation. Basically, deflation is negative inflation, meaning that the CPI for the previous month in, uh, in July was lower, was higher than the CPI for the current month in August. And when you get the difference, and you, you see, then you calculate the percentage, it gives you a negative number. So that is what is obtaining here. And um, uh, the next now, these developments in the monthly food and non-food inflation, 
uh, leads us to developments in the overall monthly inflation, um, which slightly rose to 0.4%, almost stable, in the month under review from 0.3% uh, in July 2021. So we are coming from a peak of 3.7%, that is in January 2021, um, after a low of 0.5% in August 2020. What we are seeing is something positive. The key thing is that this should be sustained going forward. We've had some kind of setback in, uh, in August where it has, it has gone up uh, the overall monthly to 0.4% from 0.3%. So those were some of the, 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 the developments on a monthly basis. And then this now leads us to developments on a 12-month basis, which we want to call annual, um, we are recording uh, annual food inflation uh, rising to 1.6% from the 1.2% during the month, and again mainly meat and, and chickens. Um, <clears throat> we are then also recording, uh, or we have recorded a decline in the non-food inflation to 16.3% from 17% during the month of, uh, of, uh, of July. And again, this was on account of the fall in prices of uh, most motor vehicles, both the brand new vehicles and the second hand vehicles. And the chart there shows you that um, inflation developments have been subdued, basically, have been benefiting from the stability in the non-food inflation. If you see over the 12-month period, we're just around 17%. And that has been pushing uh, inflation down, but then food has been pushing inflation, inflation up. Now, out of these developments, we've got non-food falling, and then the food inflation uh, increasing. The overall annual inflation declined to 24.4% in the month of August from 24.6%. The first time, I think, in, I think in more than um, 12 months uh, that we've had uh, since uh, the time we had single digit. And then when inflation started increasing, that's maybe another 12 months, I don't know, maybe 20 months or so, we've now seen inflation uh, falling, though slightly, and this began uh, in June 2021 when inflation had increased to 24.6% from 23.2% in May. And then in July 2021, we had inflation remaining unchanged and now inflation declining to 24.4%. And again, like I, I did mention at the beginning, much of this uh, benefiting from the movements in the actions rate those prices which are indexed to the, the dollar um, have fallen in quarter terms and therefore we are seeing this. But also we still see some, some downward movement in prices of some food items, though not as strong as one would have expected to have a further reduction uh, in, um, in overall uh, annual inflation. The next slide basically is just uh, evidence to, to some of the prices on a monthly basis. You see the gray bar is, um, is, uh, is August. So we're trying to compare what happened uh, between August and July, but also the two August, the one for 2021 and the one for 2020. You see some slight movements during on a monthly basis of a meat product. So, the stubbornness in the prices of meat, you can actually still see it. The next slide, uh, again, just shows the, the, the chickens, especially the, the, the live chickens. Again, you see some, some movements on a monthly basis. Again, doing that upward pressure in terms of uh, uh, inflation. We also have some prices, uh, fruits, also we've seen some upward movements. Again, you see those, uh, those, those, uh, those, uh, those pressures. Um, the next um, slide, again, this is what I've talked about, 
huge movements, almost a third, for the first two sets types of vehicles uh, reduction. And this has had some, 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 some positive influence. And then also vegetables, we also saw some movements and these vegetables we are showing here um, are commonly consumed by the majority of, of the people and therefore are important in the consumer basket, consumer food basket. On a provincial basis, um, we are seeing, we, we've recorded um, basically uh, a fall in inflation in uh, five provinces, uh, Central, Eastern, Lusaka, Northwestern and Western provinces. And then inflation remained unchanged in the southern province, but we, we saw an increase in the Copper Belt, Luapula and Northern provinces. And uh, this is also important. Um, and um, again, we are saying that Northern province uh, continue to have the highest inflation, though inflation in northern, in northern province had declined during the month of uh, um, August. And then we had the lowest inflation in southern province. I think the other one is just contributions. Then international trade. International trade, basically what we are, we are showing there is the total uh, cumulative uh, trade. We are saying that during the seven, seven months of 2021, compared to the seven, first seven months of 2020, we are still uh, high up in terms of the trade, trade, uh, trade values by 3.3% at 214.6 billion kwacha compared to 117.12 billion. So in terms of trade, we've done done quite well, both in terms of exports and um, and, uh, and, uh, and imports. This, both in terms of export and import volumes, in terms of shares by mode of transport, we continue to rely on, on road transport, followed by a road transport. Next slide. Next slide. The next one is uh, the trade balance. We continue to record um, uh, a trade surplus and during the month of July we recorded a trade surplus of 3.6 billion uh, though lower than the trade surplus uh, during June 2021 of 5.7 billion and again this was mainly on account of um, an increase in imports of 7.6 percent and, an, and a decline in exports of 5.1%. So that narrowed the trade surplus from 5.7 billion kwacha to 3.6 billion uh, kwacha. Now, in terms of uh, the, the exports, um, uh, basically the increase emanated from um, a fall in export earnings from uh, raw materials, consumer goods, capital goods, and intermediate goods by 17.8%, 14.7%, 3.4%, 3 and 2.7% respectively. Um, however, uh, exports of copper in terms of value increased by 39 uh, percent to 13.4 billion and this was on account of an increase in export volumes of copper which was which increased by 4.5 percent as um, the copper prices basically um, decreased as indicated by the LME copper prices decreased by 1.9 percent mm -hmm. then uh, the next uh, slide um, I think this one just shows a share of the exports. Again, the same story. Uh, uh, copper, basically uh, traditional exports, dominated by copper, 
taking up some the 2.5 percent, and um, the the NTs taking up the the rest. Now, in terms of NTs, so in terms of the copper export, uh, co uh, sorry, exports, copper export earnings increased by 3.7 percent, whilst the non-traditional exports declined by 22.5 percent during the month of uh, of, uh, of July. And um, the breakdown, before we come to this slide, the breakdown of uh, the NTs in both, in two, the agricultural NTs and non-agricultural NTs, um, show that agricultural NTs declined by 4.8%, while non-agricultural NTs declined by 30.2%. And uh, agricultural NTs basically comprise uh, exports of soy cake to Zimbabwe and India, uh, tobacco to Malawi and cane sugar, Congo DR. The non agricultural NTs exports uh, sulfur to Congo DR, uh, rubies, sulfurs, and emeralds to India, as well as manganese to China and South Africa. But South Africa also, on the next slide, I think to bring me to the next slide where we are seeing. Uh, we're just showing the, the exports of bullion, and much of this normally is destined to South Africa. Um, in terms of imports, imports basically uh, we say that these imports increased by 7.6% uh, and driven by 20.1% and 16.9% uh, import bills of consumer goods at an increase and uh, capital goods uh, respectively. These others, in terms of uh, the, other, the other ones, these are normal, I think uh, it's continuous with respect to export destinations. Um, this one is basically showing uh, the dominance of intermediate goods, which is basically copper uh, taking up uh, at 1.1% in terms of total share of exports and followed by consumer goods and then capital goods. The next slide um, is basically telling us that uh, capital goods, um, like we reported earlier on, increased by 16.9% and took up a share of 41.8% followed by consumer goods. These are basically the imports. Um, then um, again, you see that in terms of export de destinations, based on region groupings, you have it switches between uh, Asia and uh, Switzerland. During uh, July 2021, Switzerland was stopping with 7.9% share, followed by Asia with 6.6% uh, share, and the other, the other ones. And Switzerland is Switzerland, Asia in terms of exports of China, uh, Singapore and, and Hong Kong, the combination of SADC and COMESA will have mainly DRC, um, South Africa, and, and Kenya and this Af in the East African community. And then SADC, SADC exclusive exports, you'll have things like uh, the bullion to South Africa, and then some exports to, to again uh, DRC, uh, because it's part of SADC, and the number of SADC, uh, other SADC countries. Uh, the imports basically, I mean, the dominance of uh, Asia. I think there will be India there. There will be United Arab Emirates in terms of gas oil, uh, India medicants, and uh, Asia, I think you'll have things like motor vehicles and so on and so forth. Uh, SADC exclusive, we know that we imported quite a bit in terms of medicants uh, from South Africa, but even vehicles from South Africa. Um, <coughs> And then European Union, dual SADC and Comesa um, regions. Uh, so that's that's a story on that slide. That is what we basically had for today. And uh, thank you very much.